Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to the virtual reality training area in Planetside 2. Every faction has one of these. You can get to it through the world terminals through your warp gate. Just look for the terminals that have this globe icon, uh, or this globe image on their monitors, and or their displays, and uh, this warp gate terminal icon above them. You see that little icon right there? Oops, it actually dims out whenever I uh, zoom in, or whenever I hold right-click with my uh, recon dart gun thingy here. Anyway, so Awesome Sight 2 has been updating again on my channel, much to the delight of some of you, and to my delight as well, because I'm enjoying playing, recording, and uploading the footage uh, to YouTube for Awesome Sight 2. So that's actually really cool. And it's led to some questions about my builds for my various uh, classes, such as Heavy and Infiltrator, which are the two that tend to get the most questions, because that's the footage that I tend to put up the most of. So, um, well, actually, and, and uh, of my Reaver as well. I want to focus on the Infiltrator today, because that's the one that seems to be uh, dominating my uh, footage lately, because that's just what I feel like playing. Although I do very much enjoy the Reaver play and the Heavy Assault play as well. I just seem to be doing a lot of Stalker stuff, just because that's just what I feel like doing. So, um, I've been asked about my uh, Stalker play, so I could show you my build as it stands, and um, you could just copy that. But more importantly, I'm, while I am going to show you my build and why I use every part of that build, I'm going to show you how to put together your own Stalker build. Because you may not have the certs that I do. I have everything maxed out that I need for my Stalker setup. Um, you may not have those options. So I want to show you how to actually put together a Stalker setup uh, of your own. Because everything that I use may not be uh, the perfect fit for you, so you should look into your options and build your own Stalker spec that suits you uh, perfectly. Or as as well as or as good as you can get it. So, anyway, let's go ahead and head over here now. In the VR, I don't have the exact setup that I use uh, in the field. Let's just go ahead and go to the terminal, and I'll show you. I don't have the exact setup that I use in the field in here, but we're, that's okay because we're going to build it step by step here. I'm going to show you what I use. Uh, I do like the AF4 Cyclone, but you can't really use a primary weapon with the Stalker cloak. So again, we are covering the Stalker setup today and I may do one for my heavy and my other inf um, well my, my other builds with other classes or even the same classes here such as my uh, sniper spec or my infiltrator spec as opposed to my stalker spec which all go in the same infiltrator class in any case let's go ahead and set it up it doesn't really matter what your primary weapon is going to be because you can't use your primary weapon with a stalker cloak and here is the stalker cloak ability right here if you click on ability you see you have three types of uh, armor or three types of uh, different types of cloaking uh, abilities or different abilities that you can use. You've got Hunter Cloaking, which is the default. Let's go ahead and set it up, which is the uh, default cloak that you can use. So you can see if I run around with Hunter Cloaking, you'll notice my energy down here in the lower right is depleting. Whether I'm standing still, crouching, moving slowly, jumping, or what have you, it's depleting as long as I am cloaked, and that has a limited duration. And once it's out, boom, there you are, you appear. So that's Hunter Cloaking for you. Uh, it's actually really good because you get to use your primary weapon with it, so it makes you pretty devastating being able to use uh, an SMG or a sniper rifle or something along those lines. But that's not what the Stalker Cloak setup is all about. I, I choose the Stalker Cloaking uh, setup for a lot of behind-the-enemy-lines uh, tasks and things that I tend to do. So we've got Stalker Cloaking 5. I'm going to select that one. Now, you see my primary weapon goes away, and whatever secondary weapon I have equipped is automatically set up there. Uh, you can use various different kinds, like this crossbow, or the gun that you see in my videos, or that commissioner, or the default pistol, or all kinds of different things that you can use as far as your um, your secondary weapon is concerned. But anyway, the stalker cloak, while I'm cloaked, you'll notice as I'm moving, again, look down here in the lower right for my energy, you can see if I stand still while cloaked, it recharges. If I move, it depletes as I'm moving. But if I begin to run low on energy, like I'm down to half right now, so let's say I'm behind enemy lines in an enemy base or at one of their towers or something, and I need to stay hidden, I'll just stop and I'll crouch, and that makes me mostly invisible. That makes you the least visible. You aren't completely invisible. If somebody's really close to you, they might, and it's, there's just an extremely small chance, but they might very well see a uh, little bending of the light. They might see... Uh, the shimmer of, uh, of an infiltrator. But you'll see that my cloak energy has regenerated, and I can keep moving. So on and so forth. But you can't attack, and you can't interact with anything while uh, under the effect of a stalker cloak. So I really like the stalker cloak because it lets me hang out behind enemy lines and get a lot of experience off of takedowns and hack things and take over turrets and plant traps and do all kinds of really cool stuff that you've seen in the Awesome Side 2 videos. And if you haven't seen those, the link to the Awesome Side 2 videos is in the video description, so you can go check out all those. 
and maybe you'll spot some stalker cloak play because there are a lot of videos there. Check the more recent ones if you're looking for stalker cloak play. In any case, this is the build that we're going to be setting up today, and I'm going to show you how to set one up. So let me. All oh, right, I can't interact while cloaked. Ha! We just covered that. All right. So besides, of course, the essential stalker cloaking ability, we want to consider our weapon. I tend to use the LA-8 Rebel, and I'm going to select this gun. Uh, I'm not sure how much this one actually costs. I think it's 250 certs. You'll have to look up on the wiki. Um, I can't tell you how much each of these costs because I've already purchased some of them, and it doesn't show up on my screen. So there's that. Um, actually, Yeah, the ones that I don't have unlocked, like the underboss here or the black hand, they do show up how much they cost but the ones that I own already don't, so you have to look those up. Anyway, I like the LA-8 Rebel. This, in my opinion, is the best stalker cloak weapon in the game, and that's why I choose it. For me, it's the best stalker cloak weapon in the game, um, not just for the new conglomerate, but for all factions. I don't think anybody ha I don't think any other faction has a pistol that matches this one, which is amazing as a, as a new conglomerate stalker, because it means you have a one-up on the other factions if you run up against one of their stalker, stalker infiltrators or what have you. So it's pretty cool. And then you've got your attachments to consider. Let's go ahead and take the attachments off. Go ahead and take them both off there. And here we have the LA-8 Rebels. So I'm going to resupply, and here we have the gun in its base form. One of the reasons I like this gun so much is because it's very steady. This is why I like this weapon. It's very, very steady. And as a Stalker Cloak Infiltrator, you're not going to be firing too far into the distance, so I'm not going to pick on uh, targets that are off in the distance too much. But we've got this gun, and... Oh, okay. Just go ahead and disappear on me, target. That's fine. Oh, now one reappears. Fine, that's fine. Um, in any case... Yeah, it takes like five shots. Five body shots to take down a target. But as you can see, the gun is very... I'm not going to move the mouse at all. See how the gun pulls up whenever I pull uh, pull the trigger like that? It has a straight upward pattern, and the gun steadies itself very quickly. So if I do this, and I stop moving, if you give the gun just an instant to re-steady itself, you'll see that's a very tight cluster of shots right there. And it has a 10-round magazine. So those five shots that you need to get off... Not too difficult to get off with this gun because it's so easy to control and handle. And of course, whenever you're aiming down sights, you get that much more control. But if you fire rapidly, if you'll notice right there how it pulled up. It pulls straight up. Not a lot of guns do this. Well, okay, well, not all guns do this. The way it pulls straight up, some guns will pull up and to the left when you fire, up and to the right. Some pull more to the sides whenever you... Uh, fire the weapon. This one is very easy to control because it pulls straight up, which means as you're firing, you've just got to pull the mouse down slightly. As you're, that, that was me compensating right there. That was me firing um, while pulling the mouse down just a little bit as I'm firing. See, I was able to keep that tightly clustered uh, even though I was firing rapidly. I'm pulling the mouse down just slightly, and I'm landing those shots all in the same general vicinity because I'm compensating. So you got to know how your weapon um, pulls whenever you whenever you fire it, so that you know which way to compensate. And this gun has a really easy to control uh, recoil, so that's that's amazing for it. And it's got a lot. It's a high damage weapon. Two headshots will take out a target, and a lot of the time you're very close to the enemy. See that? Two headshots, no problem. Oh, I need to get some more ammo here. There we go. Two headshots. That's just amazing. I love this pistol so much. Plus, it's got a nice sound. And when you're a stalker cloak out in the field, you do often get opportunities like this where you're this close to a target. And you can nail two headshots just so quick like that instantly. That was me firing from the hip. I'm not aiming. This is this is firing from the hip, by the way, for those of you who don't know. I realize a lot of you do know, but there are some who don't understand or don't know what firing from the hip versus aiming down sights is. Firing from the hip basically means you aren't doing this. This is aiming down sights. This increases your accuracy. Uh, but firing from the hip gives you a better field of view. So if you've got enemies moving around you very quickly, obviously it's going to be difficult to keep your uh, reticle on them or your... Um, your aim on them if they're moving around you quickly and you're aiming down sights. So up close, you often want to fire from the hip because you've got uh, much more control over the gun that way. And even while firing from the hip, you want to go for those headshots. Which 
I did not land there. Wow, that guy just pulled out a freaking huge weapon. That's the new conglomerate for you. Big, powerful weapons. So anyway, that's why I really like the LA-8 Rebel. And as far as the attachments for it are concerned, I'll we'll go ahead and select it. We'll hit Change Attachments. I pick up the suppressor, and the suppressor reduces the noise and muzzle flash generated by the firearm. So basically, it makes you less noticeable because it also prevents the player from showing up on the minimap when firing. So players, enemy players won't see you appearing on their radar, so the opposition isn't going to see you whenever you're doing your thing behind enemy lines. Uh, not easily, anyway. They'll have to get an actual visual of you because you won't show up on minimap. So the opposition, uh, opposition has a much tougher time finding you when you have a suppressor equipped. But bullet velocity and effectiveness at range are reduced. I'm okay with both of those. Because, again, you're doing a lot of fighting up close whenever you're a stalker. So the downsides to this are very much negated, or mostly negated, and you gain the fact that you're more stealthy, a lot more stealthy with a suppressor equipped. And as far as the rail attachment is concerned, I equipped laser sight, which increases accuracy when firing from the hip. We just covered what that is. Uh, I don't get, well, I guess you can pick whatever camo you want. There aren't any optics or ammo for it, so I just basically pick up the one available attachment for the uh, barrel, which is the suppressor, and the laser sight for the rail. So now we re-equip it. There we go. Now this is the this is the weapon. Pretty much as I use it in the field. Well, as I use it in the field, this is the weapon. Mine uh, in the field has camo on it or what have you, but this is the VR version. But this is how I set it up. So um, you'll notice that the reticle is now more tightly pulled in. So the, the little crosshairs that you see up there in the middle of the screen, they're not as widely spread out as they were before I added the laser sight. And laser sight typically is going to look like this, by the way. Uh, but there's a hot key on your keyboard for you to turn off your laser sight. I just think this, it just gets in the way. <laughs> I'm not sure if the enemy sees it whenever you do this. I'm pretty sure most of the time they do. So you just press the hot key to turn off the laser sight, which I think is L by default. But for me, it's uh, one of the mouse buttons, one of the, one of the thumb buttons on my mouse. But I turn it off. So it's not in the way, and so that enemies won't see it and make me more noticeable. You you do still gain the benefit of its increased accuracy, whether it's on or off. So I just turn it off, because it makes no difference, except it makes you less noticeable. So there is that, but yeah, it's, it's more accurate now, because the crosshairs are more tightly pulled in. So it increases accuracy when firing from the hip. So getting headshots at distances like this, a little easier. Which is pretty cool, whenever you're firing from the hip. Again, it doesn't really affect uh, your aim down sights very much. Oh, that one disappeared. That one disappeared, too. Let's go find a different target. There we go. Again, the further you are, the less those bullets are going to deal damage, so it may take it to, like, seven or eight rounds at further distances. But again, as a stalker, you're going to want to be pretty up close. That kind of thing. All right, so there's the LA-8 Rebel. However, that's not your only choice whenever going stalker infiltrator. There are a ton of other choices that are just as viable. The default pistol, for example, and this is going to please a lot of you who want to get right into Stalker Cloak play, the default NC4 is actually not that bad of a pistol for this setup. There it is in its uh, normal state. It handles a lot like the LA-8 Rebel. Fires a little faster even, perhaps. It's got a 15 round mag. And that is me actually compensating again. Let's take a look at how it how it pulls. Let's do this. Mm, it pulls up, and it looked like it went slightly to the left there a little bit, and then wavered back to the right. So it kind of varies to the left and right. So it requires a little bit more compensation. But you know what? It steadies itself pretty nice. That's pretty cool. So this is actually a really good uh, option as well. Um, if, you're, if you don't have access to the LA-8 Rebel quite yet, let's hit the Compare Stats button and take a look at the both of them side by side. So we'll see that the mag shot, the NC4 over there on the left, which is the one I'm wielding right now, the default pistol, has a higher fire rate but lower damage. And that's why I go for the LA-8 Rebel, because you want to get those shots in, you want to try and take the target down as quick as possible, and then get on the move or hide again or just make yourself um, invisible basically, to uh, your opposition while you're behind enemy lines. The LA-8 Rebel also reloads faster. It has a lower amount of ammunition, but again, that's okay. There are plenty of ways to find ammunition out in the field, and sometimes you aren't going to run out of ammunition anyway. So for the specific purpose of going Stalker, the LA-8 Rebel is better, but the NC-4 is very well serviceable as an option. So if you don't want to spend on the LA-8 just yet, 
the NC4 can get you by just fine. So if you wanted to do that, by all means, go right ahead. And it's got the uh, same attachments, the suppressor, and the, uh, well, actually, that's the LA-8 right there. Let's go to the NC-4. There we go. It's got the same attachment options. It's got the suppressor, and this, again, is the mag shot. It does look different, but it is the NC-4. And for the rail, you've got the laser sight. And, again, there are no optics or no camo options available. Oh, sorry, no uh, optics or ammo options for it, but there are... Uh, there is camo. Once again, there is that. So here we are with the default pistol with just a few attachments on it. Oops, that's NC. Got to be careful with that. It doesn't look like two headshots finished the job with this. That's two. Yeah, it took three headshots. So it takes three headshots with the NC4. But again, you can get those off a lot faster. And if you're in close quarters, it's really not that big of a deal. So, the upgrade from the NC4 to the Rebel is a minor one, actually. Well, it's, it's pretty significant, but it's one that you can probably go without for a long time. In fact, you may find that you just have gotten used to the NC4 and stick with that yourself. There are no underpowered or overpowered weapons in this game. Every weapon has its situation where it's going to be really good, and it has a situation where it's going to be bad, and it has situations where it's going to be right in the middle. There are no underpowered or overpowered weapons in this game on any faction versus any other faction, or even within the same faction. Keep that in mind. Alright, so let's say you don't want to use the default pistol. You can go for the uh, Commissioner, which I believe is fairly expensive. You don't have to get the gold one. There's the normal commissioner. There's this one right here, which is a thousand certs, or about seven dollars, five to seven dollars, if you get daybreak cash. And I do actually recommend, if you enjoy Planet Side 2, I do recommend buying daybreak cash and using it to buy some of these weapons, or even just cosmetic options or what have you, because, you know, this five dollars is how daybreak makes their money. That's how they keep the game running. So if you're thinking, you know what, I really want this gun, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. Just do it. I mean, just, I mean, if you, of course, <laughs> of course, use some discretion. Don't go spending hundreds of dollars all at once if you can't afford that kind of thing. But, you know, don't uh, don't be shy in uh, purchasing weapons. Again, there are no underpowered or overpowered weapons in this game, so it's not a pay-to-win situation. Although it can be said that for vehicles, that may actually be somewhat the case, but we're not going to get into that uh, in this particular video. We might top, t touch on that topic again at some other point. In any case, the NS-44 uh, is a good weapon. For this kind of, I'll go ahead and use the... Uh, the normal one, since this is the one you'll probably end up using. I bought the gold version just because it looked cool, and again, I wanted to support, uh, at the time, Sony Online Entertainment. But the NS44 is good. I'm going to select this. Man, this video is going to be long, isn't it? Because we're barely on the weapon. <laughs> and there are so many other options. The others might go pretty quick, though. Alright, so the NS44 is loud. This is a loud weapon, but it is strong. Uh, it packs a punch. It's basically an Old West-style six-shooter, except, you know, modern, or <laughs> futuristic, and probably a lot heavier in damage. See that? That's crazy. It's extremely loud, so you're probably going to be noticed. There is no suppressor option for this. There really isn't a suppressor option for this. But let's see how many headshots it takes to take down a target up close. You know, it still takes two. And this thing fires a lot slower. However, as far as body shots are concerned, let's find another target up close, perhaps. Somebody want to appear. That's an NC target. Don't want to hit that. You can. You can use them for testing. It doesn't actually penalize you for doing it. I just don't like hearing the blink sound whenever you hit a friendly. Uh, I'm waiting for a close-up target to appear, so let's just let that happen. There's one. Let's see body shots. Takes three body shots with this. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say... I'm not going... Unless you're really good with this weapon and you already are familiar with it, I wouldn't really put it as an option for Stalker. It's, I was going to say that you can if you wanted to, but you know what? We just tested it, and I don't really like how it handles or anything about it for Stalker. Now, it's a great sidearm in a lot of other situations, but for Stalker play, it's probably not what you want to go with. It does have optics, though. Unlike the two pistols that we looked at earlier, you can select different types of... Uh, optics for us. We're going to click the yellow dot and I guess if we're still considering it for stalker play, you probably want the laser sight. <laughs> I guess you can get various colored laser sights, but we're just going to use this one right here. Uh, no ammo or barrel options, so you can't steady the gun and you can't silence it. Wow. 
Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say that this gun is not really an option for stalker play, so don't even worry too much about that. However, the Hunter Crossbow and the LA-3 Desperado. Let's go ahead and talk about the uh, Hunter Crossbow first. We'll remove the attachments from it. Which one am I even using right now? I'm using a Nico XR2X. Alright, we're gonna take this off. Take off the laser sight. The Hunter Crossbow. It's a pretty cool weapon. It's very niche. It's a more medium range style of stalker play. It is a it is considered a secondary weapon, an off well not really an offhand, but a secondary weapon. So it's really good. Uh, it kind of specializes in landing these really accurate headshots at medium ranges. It's fairly versatile too, in that you can equip different types of ammo with it, but you can't carry them all at the same time. So that's kind of a little bit of a problem. This can be an option. I wouldn't recommend it wholeheartedly, or not all the way, I guess, um, for stalker play. There are some fights where it could come in handy, though. Those fights where you want to go stalker, but there's a lot going on, so there's a lot of, like, it's really likely that you're going to be detected. You can actually take this crossbow and do fairly well at medium ranges. Like, I'm going to pull back... Well, actually, those are medium range targets that I'm firing at right there. It's a really accurate... Uh, gun once you get the hang of it because there is a projectile speed and that can kind of throw you off a little bit whenever you're first starting out with this oh no Amorous has fallen into the Terran Republic but other than that uh, it's actually I've used this before in a few of my videos I've had a lot of fun with it it's a good accurate weapon you can change out its sights like I had the uh, the 2x sight again it's a medium range weapon and the laser sight for the rail, in case you in case you need to do that up close fighting, you can do that kind of thing. I'd say dark light's probably okay too, but I'd recommend laser sight over dark light almost every time. As far as ammos are uh, different types of ammo are concerned, you can use detect bolts, which wouldn't really work for you as a stalker. These let you tech. Uh, they basically work as recon darts, which we'll get into later. Uh, for classes that can carry the crossbow that are not infiltrators, so I don't know. These two are kind of a uh, little strange. There are explosive bolts. We'll get into the explosive bolts right now. Actually, these ones explode on impact. Wow, things like blow up in my face. You can kind of see the projectile speed as I strafe left there. But this is more for taking out maxes, or basically this is support fire. You're not going to get a whole lot done with the explosive bolt. I'm going to tell you right now, don't expect it to be anything extremely cool. It looks cool, but its performance is lackluster, to say the least. It won't do very well versus infantry, as we'll see here. Well, that was two shots, actually, just like the normal bolts, wasn't it? <laughs> well, maybe you'll want to experiment with it. Again, it's not something I would recommend because you don't need these big old explosions working for you uh, in in every situation. Against maxes, again, it's a very situational thing. I'd actually recommend no ammo, but your optic of choice is perfectly fine. There are a lot of different optics. Like, if you wanted to go... Uh, I don't think I want to go that high exactly, but like the uh, 3.4 or even the Quadra, oof. There's a quadra sight that you can get for this thing, and that zooms way in, doesn't it? <laughs> it really depends on your playstyle. Check out all of the different optics, because they all work fairly well with the Hunter. I prefer the 2x, or just no optics at all, but I'll take the 2x, and again, the laser sight to increase the hip fire accuracy. Oh, that was a headshot! Hip fire. Oh, he was already very damaged. That was another headshot. Hip fired headshot. That's pretty good stuff right there. So these work pretty well. This is this is an option for medium range stalker play. It really is. It's it's a viable option. Then again, so are the other pistols. So again, play around with these. I'm showing you how to build your own stalker. You play around with these options, see which ones you like, and see which ones you want to invest in, and in what order. Now the LA3 Desperado is also another fantastic uh, sidearm for this purpose. I'm going to take the uh, attachments off here so we can see it just as is. Now, this is supposed to be sort of like an answer to the Terran Repeater, the Terran Republic Repeater, which fires three rounds in a single burst, and this fires two. They do deal a lot of damage. This is and this is a weapon that you almost exclusively want to hip fire because it gives you so much control. It's a really good close 
quarters combat weapon for not only the stalker but other classes as well. I'd recommend carrying this weapon on heavies, engineers, medics if you want to. It, it's you know if you don't want to use something like the commissioner or even just the default NC4, you can use something like this because if you come up close, if you come up close against an enemy and you pull this out, you're going to be at a pretty good advantage if you run low on ammo on your primary weapon, for example. It's just a pretty good weapon overall, but you can aim down sights with it. Nail those headshots pretty well. But the gun's got considerable kick. Let's go ahead and take a look at its uh, clustering over here. Yeah, look at that. That's that, that's kind of a bit of a left-right spread, and it pulls up. So the, the faster you fire with it, the less accurate it's going to be while you're aiming down sights, which is why I'd recommend facing opponents up close, like within this range, and hip-firing, because you spray them with bullets with this thing, just by click, 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 click. Pulling that trigger in rapid succession, you're spraying them with bullets because you'll notice as I do that, the uh, crosshairs, the cone of fire, doesn't spread out too much with this thing. Actually, it does by that last shot, doesn't it? So you're going to have to employ a little bit of uh, trigger discipline. An alert is starting elsewhere. A little bit of trigger discipline and maybe fire in uh, smaller controlled bursts at longer ranges. Or go ahead and go for the aim down sights option. There's a enemy engineer in the area. The target over there. Wow, <laughs> we weren't able to take him down with this. That's okay. Pistols aren't really meant for those long range uh, firefights anyway. Except for there is one, the Black Hand, I think, that was designed for that sort of thing. In any case, uh, I actually really haven't taken a look at the Black Hand. You know what? Let's do that right now. We'll go back to the uh, Desperado shortly. Let's take a look at the black hand here. This one is this is a second this is a sidearm that is designed for long range combat. Oof. It's got quite the kick. It's got a lot of kick on it. But it's kinda like a handheld sniper rifle, isn't it? Except for the fact that it doesn't deal a ton of damage, so you're not gonna get those one shot headshots. Even this close, it still takes two shots to the head. Now I play a stalker, a type of stalker that is very fast on the move, very fast on the stalker's feet, very agile, jumping up and down different levels, running, dashing around corners, getting up close, scoring takedowns that way. Um, I would not use this very much. At least not right now. I might actually pick this up in future videos just to try a different style of stalker play, so don't count this one out yet. I'm not going to count this one out just yet. If you wonder... Oh, that's nice. That's pretty far off right there. I'd really like to see how much I have to lead a target with this. That's very interesting. It's very accurate, though. Yeah, that's extremely accurate. I intentionally aimed like a pixel above that target's head, and the weapon missed. It flew right over his head. But if I put the crosshairs right on there, dang, this thing's got a very fast muzzle velocity then. Pretty accurate weapon. It's, an, it's a different type of stalker play. I don't do the long-range type of stalker stuff, but if you wanted to, this would be the weapon you'd go to. And if you wanted recommendations on attachments for it, since, you know, just offhand, I'm just going to make a quick couple of recommendations. I wouldn't pick up any of the sights, actually, because the default sight seems pretty nice. They're all 4X either way. Let's go ahead and pick one up to see how it looks. You got the red dot there. So look at all the different sights and see which one works for you. But I really wouldn't invest in them because to me, in my opinion, the crosshairs of the default sight work very well with this. As far as the rail is concerned, you've got the laser sight. Uh, you're not going to really be doing close quarters combat with this thing. Which is what the laser sight is for. Oh, but that's not to say that you can't, huh? Look at that, that's pretty quick. <laughs> if you had to defend yourself up close, maybe a laser sight would be good. You only have four rounds with this thing, though. I like that. Okay. It's pretty neat. That's a weapon that I'm not going to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and recommend it if you want to do a long-range stalker style. Again, that's not the style that I do. I think long-range stalker could be... Um, <laughs> interesting, actually. But difficult to play. Because if you can't score... It's not like an actual sniper rifle where a headshot is going to equal a kill. So this one has a lot of margin for error. You're going to have to land both shots at long range as a stalker to actually take somebody down with this. But if you can manage that, then this could actually score you a lot of takedowns. You could do a lot with it. So that's something to consider if you want to do that sort of option. I'm probably going to try that at some point, but uh, not right now. All right, so again, I don't currently use that. I'm just making that as a disclaimer.
you can choose to if you'd like to. Anyway, we're going back to the uh, LA-3 uh, Desperado here with the suppressor and the laser sight on it this time. We've seen it in its normal capacity, its usual capacity, without any th any other attachments. But now with the laser sight, and it, you can hear that the sound has changed with the sniper. Oh, sorry, with the suppressor. Yeah, look at that. You score so many more shots with the laser sight attached to it. Even at close to me well, approaching medium ranges. This is just a really good pistol all around. Um, it's good as a sidearm for multiple classes, so this is another one that you might want to consider. Okay, so we've looked at the pistols that I would really recommend, or the options that I would really recommend for your stalker play. There's also the NC-08, which basically serves as a secondary weapon shotgun, but it's not really that powerful. I have tried this. I have considered this for stalker play, but it's really loud, first of all doesn't have a, a very large magazine. It seems to fire pretty slowly, and you have to be really close for it. You don't have options like firing from here. Look at that. That took four shots for, at that range, and as a stalker, you really need to be able to get up to like at least that, at least halfway past that, that 10 meter mark right there. So, I don't know. I wouldn't really re recommend this at all, but it's something you might want to test. <laughs> Again, like the commissioner, it's not something I would recommend. So anyway, there's that. So we're going to go to, with my setup. You have your options now for which weapon you want to use. Again, the NC4 default pistol is perfectly fine if you want to go with that. I use the LA-8 Rebel. So we've selected the LA-8 Rebel. Now let's look at the rest of my Stalker build. We're looking at the tool now. You have the recon detection device, which fires recon darts, and you have the motion spotter. I use the motion spotter most of the time, but I'll show you what the recon detection device does. The recon detection device fires a dart. And if you'll notice over here on the minimap, We've got now a pulsing area of effect there, and any enemies that are moving in that area will be revealed on the minimap. So that will give you clues about the enemy's movements and things like that. The bonus, or the benefit to the recon dart, is that you can fire it long distances, and off it goes, and you'll see that the uh, dart will pulse off in the distance there. Let's go ahead and do it like that, for example, and we can see it, we can see that one pulsing over here because I fired it off in this distance. So it gives you some options as far as where you place it and how you can support your team or how you can support friendly forces by providing intel like that. Even from over here, if there was a fight going on near that tree, I could fire a recon dart out there and give my... You can see that the dart is pulsing out there on the minimap, even that far away. Uh, friendlies would get the advantage of being able to see enemies in that area on their minimaps and anybody that they take down in the effect of your recon dart is going to give you a little bit of the experience too. So that's actually a pretty good way for you to get some experience. But I don't use the recon darts uh, as a stalker because they they do add that pulse to the minimap, which is very noticeable. Enemies can see that pulse, and that just informs them that there's probably an infiltrator nearby, and I don't want to tip them off. Uh, I don't want to tip them off like that. So I do tend to use the motion spotter. Now, the motion spotter is a deployable item. You select it, and you drop it down. Now, in a very wide radius around that motion spotter, we're going to see enemy movement. We're going to see enemies and which direction they're moving. The recon darts don't do that for you. So that's you'll notice that that's a little bit tougher to notice on the minimap. I tend to place them in places... Let's say this was an enemy uh, equipment terminal. I would select this and like put it like right there. And the icon for the equipment terminal on the minimap pretty much covers it up. There are different ways that you can do sneaky things. I may actually never have done the equipment terminal one, but I have done it um, by other terminals or other minimap icons and stuff like that. Or I may have done it by the terminal one too, I don't know. There are ways to hide it and it still provides you the benefit. Um, the, they can see it of course on the minimap, but depending on where they are they may not be able to access it. Like in towers for example, if I was on the top floor right now and I placed this, they would just see the mini, they would just see on the minimap, they would see the motion spotter, but they'd have to check all of the floors beneath it uh, underneath that point on the minimap to find it before they reach the top floor and eventually got to it. And there are even sometimes you can place it in little hidden spots that would be extremely difficult for them to reach. So I run the motion spotter for that reason. I tend not to... Um, I tend not to drop the motion spotter too early whenever I'm first infiltrating an area. I tend to leave the motion spotter for later. Once they already know I'm there, then I can begin tracking their movements. But I try not to reveal myself uh, any sooner than I necessarily have to. 
All right, so there's the motion spotter bit, or what you're, what you're going to use for your, what you want to use for your tool. That is. So we're going to take a look now at the next steps. Ability again, stalker cloaking five, because that's what you're looking into doing is doing stalker cloak. As far as the suit is concerned, I go with adrenaline pump. There really is no other option as far as I'm concerned. Maybe maybe grenade bandolier. I don't know. Take a look at these. See which ones you like. But in my opinion, the only two or three that you should be considering are the adrenaline pump, the ammunition belt, or the grenade bandolier, with the adrenaline pump being like 95% recommended over the other two. Adrenaline pump, basically put, it increases those, your sprint speed while you have this equipped. It makes you faster. It makes you move around the enemy territory a lot quicker while you're sprinting. It lets you get into hiding positions a lot better. Although, while you are moving, that's, this, that's one thing I should probably explain right now. Here I'm stealthed. And I'm running. I'm very noticeable like this. You can tell anybody looking at my character model at this point is probably going to see the fact that light is bending around the gun and the character model and things like that. Um, so sprinting does that. It makes you noticeable. But if you stand still and you crouch, you, you're even less visible than that. And if you move while crouched, you'll notice that there's not quite as much light being bent. You're a lot less noticeable as far as that's concerned. And yeah, the faster you move, the more noticeable you are. So you may think that the adrenaline pump, which increases your run speed, makes you more noticeable. But the offset to that is that you can do things like, let's say I needed to clear this area real quick and get right behind there to hide. See, I wanted to get right over there, and there's enemies over there looking. I could do the whole sprint really quick with adrenaline pump and get behind it. That saves me some time in getting to that position, which makes it less likely that they're going to notice me. So if you're running behind targets and not directly in front of them, adrenaline pump is going to help you get to positions where, the, where you won't be noticed anyway. So I do recommend adrenaline pump. Um, vastly over the other two. However, again, when you're building your own spec, consider things like ammunition belt. Ammunition belt allows soldiers to carry additional uh, magazines for their primary and sidearm weapons. Of course, as a stalker, you only can carry a sidearm, or you can only use a sidearm. But if you equip that, if you find that you're lasting a very long time out in the field, and you don't really need the sprint speed, like you stay still a lot or what have you, and you just need a whole lot of ammo so that you can keep doing what you do, then maybe the ammunition... Uh, belt is a good, or sorry, the, uh, what is this, ammunition belt, what is it called? Yeah, the ammunition belt. Maybe the ammunition belt is something that you might want to consider, because it gives you more ammo. You can see I've got 90 now, I've got 90 rounds in reserve, whereas with adrenaline pump, thus not the, uh, ammunition belt, I've only got a reserve of 50. So, it gives you a lot more ammo. Again, you've got to level these up, though. You've got to buy the different, uh, levels of the certification before you get it to that point. But there is something to consider there. Then, of course, there's the grenade bandolier, which allows you to carry additional grenades. This is probably okay. Um, it depends on how much utility you want to have while you're out in the field. Let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the build before we get to the grenade bandolier, though. Again, adrenaline pump is the one that I strongly recommend, but those other two are actually very viable options. And if you wanted to, you could look into the uh, other options there. We're not going to cover them here because I don't really consider them... Uh, viable options for stalkers, but you know, you can. I'm gonna mouse over these. You can pause the video and read what they do if you like. Black armor 5, well, advanced shield capacitor right here. Black armor and nano wave armor. Okay, so moving on past the uh, suit slot there, we're gonna move over to the grenade slot. Frag grenade is default. Everybody knows what a frag grenade does. You throw it, it explodes, boom. Wonderful. That's what. That's what grenades are at their at their most base level. There are two other grenades that are available to the infiltrator, though. There is the decoy grenade, which is actually pretty tricky. It's a pretty sneaky little grenade. It simulates the sound of weapons fire and projects a false radar signature to enemies. Can also trick enemy Spitfire turrets into firing at the grenade. So that's actually really, really cool. If you want to be extremely sneaky... So if you've ever played other stealth games, you know that often you have something like throw rock, right? And you throw the rock and that makes a noise, and then all of the guards or whatever you're playing in that game will go look in that direction, and they'll go investigate it, and that lets you sneak by. The decoy grenade does something very, very similar, except it does it against human players, not artificial intelligence. It does it against human players. You throw this decoy grenade. Well, let's just go ahead and select it, and I'll show you. So I've got the decoy grenade, re grenade ready. I'm not sure it's going to actually show up on our minimap, because we aren't, we aren't TR or VS, we're NC, but let's go ahead and throw it. Or so I thought. Did I not equip that? Oh, I just didn't put any on. Okay, there we go. Grenade out!
You hear those shots? Those shots aren't coming from that guy. Those shots were coming from the grenade. Those 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 shot sounds, those are very definitively new conglomerate sounds for their weapon. And on enemy radar, there would be little signatures there as if a player were actually firing a weapon in that spot. So that's going to tip off players who are very keen on their minimap. Enemy players, that is. And they might want to go check that out, or they might become very aware of that and start trying to defend against players who aren't there. And that causes a distraction for you, and that lets you sneak by and do all kinds of really cool stuff if you wanted to go that route. I don't personally use decoy grenades because a number of reasons. Number one, a lot of people might not be looking at their minimap all that often. So you're kind of negated as far as the effectiveness of the decoy grenade in that regard. It works well against players who are really tuned into the minimap, and those tend to be the more experienced players, so it does work against those players. Um, but as far as how well it works, I feel like it's kind of up in the air. It's kind of a little bit of a gamble. I personally haven't made too much use of the decoy grenade because these are just theories that I have that it doesn't really work that well out in the field. But it could. It might very well work pretty well. However, if you throw this and enemies start seeing um, decoy marking or de decoy markers on their map that might put them to a, into a more aware state than you want them to be because they'll see these marks they'll think oh no there's uh, there's NC nearby and sure maybe they'll turn that direction and maybe that'll let you sneak by somewhere but it won't necessarily let you score takedowns on them because they're probably going to run to that area they're probably going to go find cover they're probably going to look around even more other than that just that one area like most good players will and so they it actually might stand a chance of revealing you to these players because they might look around and then spot you because of the fact that there happens to be uh, what they perceive as enemy fire nearby. So I don't really tend to use the decoy grenade all that much. Your mileage may vary. I wouldn't really recommend it all that much. But there's the EMP grenade. Now as far as the stalker is concerned, this is really the only choice in my opinion. The fire grenade could work pretty well because it could get you some clumped up kills and I've used it this way before uh, with a stalker spec. I have taken out enemies that were clumped up behind cover. It was actually really cool, but the EMP grenade has proven to be extremely useful for infiltrating. Now, you may want to swap back and forth between these two, depending on the situation that you're in. In open field, for example, where there's not likely to be a lot of enemy traps, maybe a frag grenade would be a good idea. But when you're infiltrating a tower or a tech plant or an enemy base, an EMP grenade is probably going to suit you. Um, it's probably going to work a lot better for you. Creates a blast on impact that can go through walls. That's important. It goes through walls and destroy or disable most enemy deployables. Soldiers directly caught in the blast will also have their personal shields and HUD disabled for a few seconds. Let's go ahead and equip it, and let's get ourselves caught in the blast of an EMP grenade. Boom! Uh, I guess it doesn't work quite like that. Um, in any case, I wonder if I can... Uh, I wonder if I can do this. Let's, let's set this up real quick. We're, we're going to come back to the EMP grenade, but yeah, I do tend to select the EMP grenade. That's my go-to for the stalker. Again, we're going to come back to that, but let's talk about the utility slot really quick. Now, there are a few options here. Restoration kit's probably not one that you want to take a look at because the medical kit does what the restoration kit does, which heals you, and the medical kit does it instantly. The restoration kit does have some advantages, but um, they're kind of niche. They're very specialized. The restoration kit regenerates a large portion of health over time so if you use it and then you continue to take damage the restoration kit is going to try and fill up that health bar as you're taking damage over time which is pretty useful if you're in a sustained firefight but for the most part when you take damage you're gonna jet behind cover and in that case it's not really gonna do you all that good you want an instant heal which is what the medical kit does so if you wanted to carry medical kits while you're out there it's not something I would recommend for a stalker because stalkers if they're taking shots they may already have be taken down. It may already be too late for them. They may already be getting sent to a spawn point. If you're noticed as a stalker because you have lower hit points, I think I think infiltrators have like 100 hit points fewer than the rest. Not 100% certain on that. But you're you're not very uh, defensible, other than your cloak. If you're spotted, you're not gonna be able to take a whole lot of shots as a stalker infiltrator. So if you're if you're spotted and you're taking shots already, it's probably you're probably just gonna get sent to a spawn point anyway. Plus there are other ways for you to heal behind enemy lines by hacking terminals and things like that. So, uh, medical kit and restoration kit, I wouldn't really recommend either. But if you're going to go for one, go for the medical kit. Um, but bouncing Bettys, or whatever your faction's uh, anti-personnel explosives happen to be. Bouncing Bettys for the new conglomerate. These are what I recommend, because these let you set traps. Let's go ahead and select it, and I'm going to use the bouncing Betty here. I'm going to drop one, like, right here, for example. And let's say somebody wants to run up these steps. 
at the tops of steps, by the way, is a fantastic place to put Bouncing Bettys. You know why? Because if an enemy's coming up in this regard, of course, they're not going to see that little icon right there. We can see that because that's our explosive. But if they're running up, they don't see it until they're right here. And you know what? At that point, they're still holding Shift and W. They're not going to see that at this point and go, Whoop! That's an explosive. No, they're going to keep running, and boom, that's it. They're gone. You caught them with that. I love these because these let you set up all kinds of traps. They get you all kinds of... Uh, takedowns, and you can use them to take down people in turrets, too, once you hack those turrets and such. In any case, so we've got those out there, right? But let's take a look at what an EMP grenade does to them. Okay, it doesn't detonate them in the VR, but in the field... Oh, yeah, actually, we just took the uh, EMP blast. You notice we don't have our HUD. Our HUD's just now appearing. Our shields were depleted. Our cloak was depleted. Taking the EMP blast disables anybody within it by a significant margin. Their shields go down, their abilities go down. I'm not sure if healing and stuff like that goes down, but infiltrator cloaks uh, are dispelled, basically. Stalkers can probably put it right back up, but it's still really scary to have your cloak uh, instantly dispelled like that, which is crazy. But you can also destroy enemy traps. Let's say, for example, you you are the one running upstairs, or you're at a tower. Uh, enemies will often put claymores or proximity mines in places where infiltrators often run through, uh, I've, I've shown this in my videos before, I'm not sure many people have caught it, but I tend to, in a situation like this, throw an EMP grenade at this point. I don't have one because I just used it. Actually, I can do this. If I were in a situation like this, I knowing that there might be traps over there, I would just toss this. Oh, I hit him with that, actually. So, anyway, that would detonate the enemy's traps, and that would let me move safely through. An important thing to note is that that EMP blast goes through walls. So even if there's an enemy trap right here, if my grenade goes off right here, or, yeah, my EMP grenade goes off right there, it's still going to disable all those traps in that area. So that makes a wide area safe for you to traverse. And that's really important. In addition to also removing shields and decloaking enemy infiltrators. EMP grenades are just extremely utilitarian and they're very, very, very useful in the field. So those are the ones that I would recommend. But again, depending on the situation you're in, you might want to swap to a frag grenade. So consider that as well whenever you're building your stalker spec. All right, so now we've talked about the grenade. I said we were going to go back to that, and we just did. That's the topic that I wanted to uh, talk about was the fact that it uh, takes care of enemy deployables and things like that. So there's that. And now let's take a look at the melee option. you got a couple of options for your knife. Uh, really, whichever one works for you is just fine. I don't really know what the campion or the harrower do. But comparing them to the default mag cutter here, they seem absolutely no different. So it must be cosmetic only. These three are all... Wow, those look really cool, though. <laughs> I really like this one. That just looks neat. But none of them really compare, in my opinion, to the carver. Now, the carver... The main, the main thing about the carver, it actually swings a lot slower. You can see that the mag cutter, the default knife, has a faster fire rate, which means you can swing it faster. Other than that, they're identical, except for the fact that the carver has this one particular ability. Now, there is a hotkey to swing your weapon, to swing your knife, which for me is middle click. I think it might be that might be the default. But if you hold that middle click, you'll actually pull uh, your knife out as a melee weapon, and you can swing it like this. Now, this is a lot slower. Uh, actually, there seems to be something in this area that the knife thinks it's hitting, but over here, it's not the case. So I think the Daybreak really needs to just take a look at that little area right there. They probably have some sort of a a mesh or something. I don't know how that works. <laughs> but there's a... Oh, I can't reach this. Oh, I can reach him now. Sweet. So you can swing it like that. But there's also a hotkey. Like, let me switch back to my secondary weapon here. Wow, it's already turned night in the game. It's okay. We're almost done talking about this. Uh, there's also a hotkey that you can set. Go into your options. You escape. And then go to uh, key binding. And then find the weapon, your knife option right there. I've ha I have this mapped to Tilda. So that while I'm out in the field, whenever I encounter somebody up close that I need to take down with my knife, I press Tilda. And then there's also another button to activate the knife. Once it's activated, you can hear it makes that sound. And enemies can hear that too, so if they're paying attention... They'll know that you're around if you have this thing buzzing like this. But while it's active, the knife is a one-hit kill. Except on heavies who have their shield up. But even then, another swing does the job. So this is a one-hit kill right here, even if it's not a headshot. Just anywhere. 
One hit kill. Missed him. <laughs> it didn't look like I missed him, but I missed him. One hit kill. We can actually go out here to score some one hit kills, because there are some targets out there, but we don't really need to do that right now, do we? Here, it's another target. One hit kill. It's amazing. And you turn it off when you want to be stealthy again. So I actually really recommend the Carver or whatever your faction's activatable knife is in situations like this. I tend to use the Carver for my stalker spec, but I use the default knife for other specs. Actually, I'm, that may actually change. I may start using the Campion because it looks so freaking cool. Let me get a look at this real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I take delight in this because it just looks neat. Let's look at the other one. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, this one looks... Okay, man. Okay, those are misses. and It looks like I'm not hitting... It looks like I'm hitting him, but I'm actually not. I'd have to be, like, right here to hit him. Yeah, see, you get that red reticle. So, again, this is the default knife. It swings pretty quick, and uh, if you are going to switch over to a different knife, you can probably consider doing that last, because the default knife... We're gonna switch. Well, since we know they're the same, I'll just gonna keep using this one, because it looks cool. So, there's that. Um... If you're up close to somebody, and you need to knife them quietly, as your stalker spec... Alright, why did you change to NC? Come on now. <laughs> Come on, VR. Come on, VR. What's the deal? Give me a close one here. There's a close one. You can do the job just fine with a normal knife. You get two headshots off really quick like that. A lot of people can't react to that. A lot of players aren't going to react to that in time. If they're standing still, plus, you know, latency kicks in as well. If you're next to them, if you're close enough to swing a knife, the default knife is, default knife is probably going to be just fine. Because that's pretty quick, too. It's not instant, so it does leave a little bit of room for the enemy to react, or maybe they happen to start moving as you swung the first time or something, in which case you would not score a takedown on them right there. But in that case, you can pull out your sidearm, or you can pull out your uh, secondary weapon here and take them down the rest of the way if you needed to. So there is that. There's something to consider. I personally use the Carver because it does give me that one-shot kill. It's just really cool to take down a target with this, maybe turn around, take down another target, stealth, get out of there, turn it off, switch over to my uh, main weapon here, and then hide. It's cool to do stuff like that. The Carver enables that for you, whereas you can't quite as easily do that with the default. But if you are going to take out a target silently, uh, then the just a single target and the default knife should probably work just fine. So it's one of those things for you to consider. Uh, maybe if you if you do if you want to change your knife at all, I mean you don't have to. If you want to, maybe consider doing that later on in the build because it's not one of those things that I consider absolutely essential. So there is that. This is my stalker build. This is my stalker build as I use it. Oh, okay. Actually, let's talk about the implant. There's really only one. Um, I have to, actually okay. I keep saying that, but then there are always options, aren't there? There are always options, but again, um, the options, aside from the one that I use, I consider to be not really, I usually consider them to be, like, far, far more niche than the uh, default one. Where is it? I use safe landing. Here we go. I use safe landing, too. You can also use safe, oh, there's also safe landing 4. Wow, I'm not sure when they added this. I think safe landing 3 was the highest whenever I decided to start using safe landing on my infiltrator. So implants, in case you don't know, they take up energy, and you have to score takedowns and get experience to earn more energy. But we're not going to touch on that topic here. You probably know what implants are if you're watching this video. If not, maybe I'll touch upon it uh, at some point in a later video. But um, if, you're looking for, if you're looking for an implant to use, safe landing 1 is okay. It takes up the least amount of energy, 0 0.75 energy per second. Safe Landing 2 is the one that I use because I found that jumping off of towers and tech plants, Safe Landing 2 usually just barely gets the job done, like from a tech plant height. If you do some ninja things where you kind of kick off the geometry halfway down or stuff like that, Safe Landing 2 is actually pretty okay. Uh, it's actually really good. And it doesn't use up a ton of energy. It uses up 0 0.75 per second. Safe Landing 3, you really shouldn't need Safe Landing 4. I don't know what you're going to be jumping off of to to use safe landing for mountains or something because safe landing 3 lets you jump from really high up <laughs> and take no damage when you land safe landing 2 lets you jump from high up and take no damage safe landing 1 lets you jump from a good height up you know so there's that I use safe landing 2 which is about middle of the road or it was exactly middle of the road 
uh, when Safe Landing 3 was the highest. I'm not sure if Safe Landing 4 is new or not. I really don't know. But anyway, there's that. I use Safe Landing 2. Any of the Safe Landings, whichever one you decide is right for you. Again, Safe Landing 1 or 2 should be just fine. Um, either one of these I would recommend strongly. These two, really not as much, but hey, if you wanted to go that far, if you wanted to spend that much energy, go right ahead. Uh, one of the Safe Landing implants, again, Safe Landing 2 being the recommended, uh, or Safe Landing 1 if you don't have the energy to spend, or uh, uh, Safe Landing, basically, is the one that I would recommend for your implant slot. However, there are other options, depending on si- on the situation. If you're going after a tech plant or a tower, then you almost definitely want Safe Landing. Because you're going to jump down between levels, you're going to jump from the top of the tower down to the ground level, and just keep moving around the tower. Same thing with the tech plant. You might want to jump over the railing to get away from somebody who spotted you, and land on the landing pad area, and make sure you survive. Safe landing is going to be really good for that. But there are other options, like if you're deep in enemy territory and you're not going to be doing a lot of jumps and stuff like that, maybe you swap that out for something like regeneration, so that you regenerate health slowly over time, so that that helps you stay uh, in the field even longer. Enhanced targeting? is a default one. It's not bad. It's really good. You can use that on a lot of specs. It's also an option for you to use there if you if you just really want to see the enemy's health bar. Wouldn't really recommend... Uh, what is awareness here? Let's see. Auto spots enemies? No, I wouldn't really recommend that sort of thing. And I can actually already feel my, my voice being a little bit strained because I've been talking a lot in this video. Safe landing, again, is the one I would strongly recommend. But there are potentially other options, like maybe sensor shield. I don't know. You take a look at them, experiment with them, try them out, see how they work for you. Um, make safe landing your your fallback. Again, these are these are um, implants are something you don't have to invest money or certifications in. You get them as you gain experience. They they're basically like drops off of takedowns. I'm not even takedowns necessarily. You can also get them from repairing or taking objectives and things like that. So you, you get implants just any time you get experience. So you probably have an array of these sitting around if you've been playing for a while. Start going through them. Look through them. Add them to your build. See what you want to do. See which ones serve a purpose for you. But safe landing is a good fallback for a stalker spec because this comes in handy in more places than just towers and tech plants. I've found it to come in handy practically everywhere, which is why I use safe landing a lot of the time. But only recently I've started to think, you know what, maybe in some situations I could swap to a different implant. And that's what you should be doing. You should be changing your build once you have the flexibility to do so. You should be changing your build based on the situation that you're going into to give you the most effectiveness. Sure, you can have a static build and always go into every situation with the same build, and that's probably what you're going to be doing if you're newer to the game and you don't have a ton of options yet, and that's perfectly fine. But when you do eventually get the options to swap, you should probably start trying out swapping based on the situation that you're in. I've just shown you every part of this build and why I use this build. Or, or sorry, why I use every part of this option. Uh, sorry, every part of this build. Because everything here has a purpose. Everything I've shown you, and I've shown you the ins and outs of the weapons, the tools, all of the uh, different abilities. Oh, sorry, there's only really one ability, which is Stalker. But all the different suit uh, options for Stalkers, grenades. I've shown you all of the viable stuff and given you my opinion on most of that thing. And as you can see, they all seem to have various different amounts uh, of customization based on your playstyle, And they all have a purpose. Every one of them has a job to fulfill. So your build should, every part of your build should have some sort of purpose. You shouldn't have EMP grenades just because I have EMP grenades or just because other stalker infiltrators have EMP grenades. Same thing with games like League of Legends and World of Warcraft. Um, You shouldn't really use builds as they are just because someone else uses that build the way that it is because they use that build. You shouldn't say, well, I mean, I, I buy Infinity Edge on this champion because... That's what that champion, or that's what uh, the meta calls for and stuff like that. Experiment. Try different things, you know? Sure, use a cookie cutter base build to get you started. And again, we're, we're, we're kind of gradient. We're kind of blending back to planet side here. Use uh, something like this, maybe my exact build if you wanted to, if you could afford it. Because again, all this stuff takes a lot of certifications to get. It takes a long time to reach this build. It really does. Um, you're probably going to have to do other things to build up this build first. You're probably going to have to do things like join uh, squads and fight with vehicles and repair maxes and vehicles and maybe join some air squadrons and take over a lot of bases. You're going to have to get certs in a lot of ways probably to build up your stalker spec a little bit first before you can actually use it very effectively because you basically need stalker cloaking four or five 
I would say five, <laughs> before you can actually start doing anything with it. Soccer cloaking one through three and maybe four aren't really that useful because you can't move very far while cloaked without having to stand still again for it to recharge. Stalker Cloaking 5 is it's great. It's right where you want to be, but it takes a lot of search to get up to stalk, uh, Stalker Cloaking 5. So there's that. In any case, once again, the point that I'm trying to get across in order to try and make this a little bit shorter is that every part of your build should have a reason for being there. And I've just gone through everything here and tried to show you everything that I do with my Infiltrator spec for Stalker play. We haven't even touched on my Sniper spec yet or my Infiltrator spec, which is more infantry based where I'm fighting with a group. But we have talked about the stalker play, which is has which has been in my awesome side videos lately, and I've gotten some questions on, and I'm sure a lot of you, I'm hoping a lot of you enjoy, and I enjoy that style of play myself, so I do intend to do more of that. But I do want to branch out now. I do want to start doing some things like maybe with that long range pistol that I showed you earlier. Start doing some stuff with the uh, the black hand, and maybe start doing some more stuff with my heavy. I don't know. There's a lot of that. So if you liked this video, if you feel like this was in depth, if you feel, if this answer a lot of your questions, or if you just enjoyed watching it, let me know in those comments. Let me know what class you would like to see next. Of the ones that I play, of course, I play Light Assault a little bit. I play Medic extremely rarely. Engineer only whenever I'm flying, for the most part. I don't really play Max at all. <laughs> well, I don't know. I probably play it once a week, or something like that, so there's that. Um, but anything that you've seen me play, like my Heavy Assault... That this is one. That's one that I definitely play quite a bit of heavy assault, or maybe a sniper, or maybe an infantry infiltrator. Uh, I do some light assault stuff as well. Let me know which of these you would like to see me go through next, uh, or if you have any other questions on Planet Side Two or what have you. Let me know. I had fun making this video. I'm gonna cut this particular session off now, though. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, let me know if you liked it. Hit that like button if you do. Leave a comment. Just give me some feedback. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.